petrol or diesel. This perennial debate continues to be as relevant as ever before in the BS6 era. The price differential between equivalent petrol and diesel models may have increased from the earlier rupees 1 lakh to rupees 1.3 or even 1.5 lakh. But there's also been a new development. You see, in the BS6 era, a new range of modern direct fuel injection turbocharged petrol engines have found their way under the hood of everyday cars. And these cars cost the same as their turbo diesel counterparts. The new Kia Sonnet and Hyundai Creta are a testament to this fact. But what's the running cost of turbo petrol cars and how much more will they cost to run over a diesel car? And then again, in the BS6 era, how long does it take to recover the cost of a diesel car over a naturally aspirated car? We hit the road to find out. Now, let's start with the newest car here first, the Kia Sonnet. The top of the line Sonnet petrol is powered by a cutting edge one liter turbo petrol engine that is available with an equally modern seven speed double clutch automatic gearbox. These modern turbocharged petrol engines, how efficient are they? We have no benchmark from earlier. So we did a full blown 100 kilometer fuel efficiency test run. We drove both the Sonnet petrol automatic and the Sonnet diesel automatic back to back at the same time of day on the same route across the same conditions and everything and I'll tell you what this car returned an astonishing 16.06 .06 kilometers to the liter now that's unbelievable and you know what this was down to the fact that a huge chunk of that efficiency run was conducted on highways so what happens when you're cruising on highways at speeds in the range of 80 to 100 kilometers an hour is that this car is always in overdrive in seventh gear and then there's a matter of the modern petrol engine well it's constantly altering the fuel and air ratio so as to give you the least amount of fuel consumption it goes into what is essentially a lean burn mode so there's a missing link here for when you're driving in india if you live in a city and during your daily runs you're not going to be cruising on a highway so what happens then well so we conducted another fuel efficiency run where we drove 33.8 kilometers in intense city traffic at this point the efficiency display was showing anywhere between 9.6 to 10.8 depending on the situation and under those driving conditions this car returned 12.02 kilometers to the liter which is 12 kilometers to the liter so that's what you get in the real world driving in the city all day long and that is not too bad a figure if you think about it. Of course, it's not 16, which is unrealistic. But at 12, it is exactly the same as a naturally aspirated manual petrol compact car. So on that account, with its uh, relatively more powerful engine and uh, double clutch automatic gearbox, the driving convenience of it, I think, you know, it's on the money. And then I conducted another fuel efficiency test, which is from office to home that's about 40 odd kilometers from my office so during this up and down driving cycle of mine this car returned 14 kilometers to the liter that's because i have a clean expressway run and this is done during non-peak traffic hours so this again can be brought down to probably 13 or 12 so you know roughly about 12 kilometers to the liter is what you're going to be getting from this car now, considering that the Sonnet diesel automatic at Rs. 12.99 lakh costs exactly the same as the Sonnet petrol DCT, we ran both cars back to back for the efficiency test run to gauge the difference in running costs. And this car brought home a fuel efficiency figure of 17.54 kilometers to the liter over the same 100 kilometer driving distance. And that is right on the money for a diesel automatic car in this class. This difference in efficiency coupled with the 10 rupee difference in fuel costs at the time of this fuel efficiency test means that it will cost you about rupees 21,000 more to drive the Sonnet petrol every year if you drive a distance of 12,000 kilometers annually. Now this was the result of a turbo petrol automatic car alongside a turbo diesel automatic car. Now we altered this recipe with a turbo petrol automatic car and ran it alongside a turbo diesel manual car to see the difference in running costs. 
In order to do this, we called in the turbo petrol automatic Hyundai Creta and the diesel manual Creta. In this instance, the Creta turbo petrol has a powerful 138 bhp engine that makes it a very quick car. Now the Creta turbo petrol with the DCT gearbox. Well, now we took this car on a fuel efficiency test run, a 100 kilometer fuel efficiency test run, which included about 25 kilometers of heavy traffic driving in slow moving city traffic and then a clean highway run. Now this brought out an unbelievable fuel efficiency figure of 15.6 kilometers per liter. Now that is unbelievable for a car of this size and engine capacity and automatic gearbox for that matter. But you know what? These modern engines are very clever. When you're cruising on the highway at 80 to 100 kilometers an hour, that's when the gearbox is in seventh gear, so the revs are really low. And then there's a the matter of the engine. It's modern technology can really make this engine go into a sort of lean burn mode when you're cruising along at constant speeds. So it's because of this reason that we got that unbelievable fuel efficiency figure. But what about the real world? What happens when you're driving in the city in day-to-day bumper-to-bumper traffic? Well, in that instance of a 33.8 kilometer fuel efficiency run only in the city, this car returned 13.94 kilometers to the liter. That's almost 14 kilometers to the liter, which is very, very impressive. So these modern powertrains with 138 bhp of power not only makes this car very punchy to drive, but it's also very, very fuel efficient. But then at the same time, outside of the efficiency runs, I took it home. And from my office to home run, which is about 40 kilometers one way, well, under those driving conditions, under fast moving city traffic and a little bit of expressway driving, the car returned 10.11 kilometers to liter. So you see, depending on the driving cycle, the fuel efficiency figures for this car vary considerably. Once again, we ran both the Creta petrol and diesel back to back during our efficiency test runs to arrive at an accurate figure. Now this Creta diesel, well, over the same cycle of 100 kilometers as the Creta petrol driven back to back, this car returned a fuel efficiency figure of 18.62 kilometers to the liter, which is roughly the real world figure that you get when it comes to one of these diesel manual mid-size SUVs. So a diesel manual car is considerably more efficient than a new age turbo petrol automatic car. In the case of the two Cretas that we ran on test here, you will end up saving nearly rupees 23,000 annually on fuel bills by driving the Creta diesel if you cover a distance of 12,000 kilometers annually. And then finally, we come to the age-old recipe of a naturally aspirated petrol manual car versus a turbo diesel manual car. For this efficiency test, we lined up the petrol and diesel versions of the new Honda City. Now, the new Honda City has an equally new petrol engine that makes this an incredibly fun to drive car. What's more, you'll even get better fuel efficiency than the other cars here. Now, we took this car on a fuel efficiency test run on a distance of a little over 100 kilometers. Now, this consisted of a mix of highway and city driving. And under these circumstances, the city petrol returned a commendable fuel efficiency figure of a little over 14 kilometers to the liter. And that is fairly impressive. It's fairly realistic because earlier Honda cities too returned on an average of about 12 to 14 kilometers to the liter. Now, like earlier, the Honda City diesel continues to have very high NVH. But if you're still hesitant about that high NVH, well, let me tell you something. Let me tell you, first of all, why there's high NVH. Well, unlike all other car makers, Honda uses an all aluminum head and block for the engine of the city. Now, aluminum engine blocks do not insulate the cabin from that tapping diesel noise as well as cast iron engine blocks too, which is why there's so much high NVH. So that's the downside of having an all aluminum head and block for a diesel engine. So you're thinking, why did Honda do that? Well, an all aluminum unit considerably cuts down the weight of an engine. And we all know weight is the enemy of energy and efficiency. So on that account, because this is an all aluminum unit, which is lighter, you get so much better fuel efficiency. 
and we did a tank to tank fuel efficiency run for all of these cars here yeah now this fuel efficiency test was conducted for a little over 100 kilometers of driving which included a little under 50 kilometers of city driving in under very heavy traffic conditions and then the rest of it was on open highways that included cruising and guess what surprise surprise this Honda City diesel shocked even me for this car returned an efficiency of 24.16 kilometers to the liter that's crazy that's unbelievably fuel efficient for a car of this size this engine capacity you are not going to get that kind of efficiency from any other car in this class or even smaller cars for that matter and you know what actually this is not so much of a surprise for me because over the years i have run a lot of honda diesel long-term cars i've run the honda jazz the honda brv the honda amaze diesel automatic and the honda city diesel as well and in all of those cars i always managed to achieve around 20 kilometers per liter fuel efficiency if not more in the real world which is astonishing it's amazing the whole point if you think about it of buying a diesel car is that you want better fuel efficiency and lighter fuel bills on your wallet and well on that account honda's it tech diesel engine has always been able to outshine any other competition as a result driving a city diesel over a city manual petrol will save you over rupees 31000 in fuel expenses every year if you drive an average of 12000 kilometers on a yearly basis so all in all it's pretty clear that diesel cars are very much here to stay and they will be preferred by people who drive longer distances on a daily or annual basis meanwhile the new age turbo petrol cars have transformed how mass market cars drive and feel in terms of refinement and performance they have made petrol cars more powerful than ever before couple in their cutting edge automatic transmissions and they truly have stepped up the game for mass market cars today but at the end of the day if you're looking for efficient petrol cars well the naturally aspirated petrol engine and the manual gearbox is still the ideal choice